On October 16th, units of the Syrian army entered the city of Raqqa for the first time since 2014. The Kurdish-led Syrian Democratic Forces, SDF, have controlled the city since 2017, when they, with help from the United States, seized it from ISIS. The Syrian army reportedly established several observation posts in the area and continued deployment within the SDF-held area. According to pro-government sources, government troops are also preparing to enter the Omar oil fields. A day earlier, on October 15th, Syrian troops and Russian military police units started patrolling the contact line between Turkish-backed forces and the SDF near Manbij. On October 16th, U.S.-led coalition forces withdrew from the Karab Ashk military base where dozens of U.S. and French troops had been deployed. U.S.-led forces burned the base in order to destroy equipment they were not able to evacuate. The Turkish army and Turkish-backed militants are developing their offensive on SDF positions. They captured 13 villages west of Tel Abiyad and made another attempt to secure Ras Al Ain. According to pro-SDF sources, 49 Turkish-backed militants were killed in an SDF counterattack in the town. SDF units employed U.S.-supplied military equipment. Pro-Turkish militants captured a Humvee armored vehicle near the town. There are also reports that the SDF and the Syrian army jointly recaptured the villages of Al-Aras, Al-Riyaniya, and Manajir from Turkish-led forces south of Ras Al Ain. Nonetheless, this was a tactical development involving Turkish proxies only. It is not likely that government forces and the SDF will carry out large-scale joint operations attacking positions of the Turkish army. The main reason is that such an attack may lead to a large-scale escalation in the region and even a limited open conflict between Syria and Turkey.